Welcome everyone. Today we'll learn how to set up a new project in Promotion NG. We can create a project directly at the home screen by using the New Project button, or we can use Menu, File, New Project, Create. There's a lot of values that can be defined, and as a beginner, you're good to go with default values. But I'll explain some of these settings so you can get some basic understanding and background information. You can enter a name for your project, which will be used for display and as the default name when saving files. There are different types of projects you can choose from. The first one is Image or Animation. It's the typical project where we can simply draw an image or animation. Tile Maps is primarily used to construct level maps and background art for video games. Such graphics are built from a set of tiles having a certain size that are repeatedly placed instead of having a huge freely drawn image. Changes in a tile lead to changes at all places where it appears. This reduces time to create game graphics, makes them look consistent, and also saves resources like computer memory or storage space. The third type of project is Bitmap Font. It has some built-in aids to create and test fonts made up of small images per character. You can then use these fonts in games or to add text to your artwork. In this video, we'll use the Image or Animation project type. On the right side, you find a list of project presets. We won't dig into this now. It's a preset management where you can define typical defaults like color palettes, resolution, or grid settings to be reused for project creation. It also contains a couple of presets for legacy console systems and their special technical restrictions. I have my own 16 to 9 preset that I use for the majority of my projects. For the image and animation project type, the canvas size defines width and height in pixels for the image as well as the number of animation frames. This can be easily modified later by cropping or increasing the canvas size. For animations, it's better to start with only one frame because when adding new frames during drawing, you can create a copy of the last one and modify it instead of having a blank new frame. The button From Brush can be used to turn a brush that contains some image or animation portion into a new project to work on that separately. The color palette for the project can be one of the default palettes that are available in the palette management. There's a few palettes that offer a good range of colors or belong to legacy game systems like Commodore 64 or Amiga. You can, of course, store your individually created palettes in the folder from where these files are loaded and use them, or load an individual file from some independent folder. RGBA channels means red, green, and blue for defining a color from these components and alpha for defining a level of transparency. You can limit the range of values for each of these components. While modifying these values is something special that roots back to hardware limitations of legacy game systems, I'd like to explain what these values do. Because when creating my artwork, I often like to work with a reduced set of possible colors out of the over 16.7 million that are technically possible with modern hardware. This simplifies the color selection for me and can also give it a retro touch quickly. The value for each of these channels is a bit value. It ranges from 1 to 8, limiting the different amount of actual values in the respective channel to the ones you see here in the third column. As you can see, using 8 bits for each RGB color channel results in 16.8 million, while using 3 bits only results in 512 possible colors. The gray ramps illustrate how the bit settings reflect the number of possible values in a single channel. With two values, you only have black and white, and the bigger the value range becomes, the more granular the shades are, and so the number of values to choose from. We'll see in a later video how this setting will affect the color composition. The background option is used to define a fixed background color that's displayed where there is transparency. Setting up a color can help make the artwork to match a certain environment coloring that is used within a game. Palette Entry selects a color from the color palette. Black or White selects the best matching value from the palette for black or white. Color allows you to freely define a color. None will define no color so that you see a checker pattern as the background telling you where transparent portions are. The Transparency option defines how transparency technically works. 
For now, we'll leave it on automatic, which will make all pixels using the first color index of the palette fully transparent. There are more options like alpha transparency, but this will be introduced in a later video. The color constraints are also a very special setting for legacy systems. We won't explain it here in detail, but just a few words on what it's used for. Legacy systems often had limitations on how many colors can be displayed at once. They had different graphic modes provided by the hardware, and a typical limitation was that within an 8x8 pixel square, you could only use two or four colors out of a set that was limited as well. Promotion NG contains some helper functions that tell you when you use too many colors for a respective mode and this allows you to create hardware compatible graphics. You might have noticed that there's a large community of people who create modern computer games for such legacy systems like C64, Amiga, NES, or the Sega Master System. You can even buy new hardware for some systems like the Commodore 64. I don't create artwork for such legacy systems myself, so I don't use these options, but there are people who will create games today even when the console requires the production of cartridges like the Game Boy. They go through the whole production process to publish their games because of a passion for the gaming system they love. The project settings allow you to preset other aspects of the project. You typically don't need to change these values, but it's worth having a quick look at them and maybe you'll want to change some things and save them as a default for future projects. Display Delays as FPS is used when creating animations with an equal frame rate of a number of frames per second instead of defining individual delays per frame in milliseconds. Save BMP etc. with minimal color depth uses bit depth modes of these file types to limit the number of colors. For example, if you are using only the first 16 colors of a palette, then a BMP file with 4 bits color depth would be stored instead of 8 bits that could use 256 colors. Save separate palette with true color files will store the color palette as a separate file for image formats that don't use palettes like PNG 24 bit. With these formats, every pixel contains all RGB values instead of being an index to a palette. When loading such images, a new palette would be created automatically with different ordering but if there's a palette file, then the original palette is revived. Expand Delay to Frames will make sure that the animation uses the frames per second if you export to an AVI file, even if you used individual millisecond delays. Store Thumbnail will add some thumbnail graphics to the project file so you can see it in the file explorer. This can help you if you have to manage a lot of artwork because you can select your files visually instead of reading the file names. The thumbnail that's stored is a downscaled version of the current image or animation frame. Auto Backup Files can help you automatically create backups of your current project. You can say how many copies you want to have and how often they should be created when you save the file. Newer copies will overwrite older ones. It's a safety net so you can revive some previous state of your work if there's a need to. Pixel size is also something for legacy systems. Some graphics modes use pixels that have a double width like multicolor modes on the Commodore 64. In the GIF tab you can find some settings for when storing GIF files. Loop GIF animation is typically set to 32,000 which is like looping it endlessly. Optimized colors can help to reduce the size of a GIF file. This can be important if you want to use them on a website, but today there are a lot of GIF optimization tools which will reduce the size even more. If you want these projects to be the global default, then you can hit the button Save as Default. Finally, the Save as Preset button allows you to create your own project preset to the preset management system. You can edit more settings for the preset before storing it. It will then appear in the list of presets and can be used for future project creation. When switching between the presets, you can see that the values in the edit fields change according to the value stored with the preset. For now, I'll use my 16 to 9 preset because this is the one I typically work with. For example, a 320 by 180 fits into HD resolution when multiplied by 6. That's all for now. In the next video, we'll start to have a look at the drawing tools and how they can be used. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in this series, then please like and subscribe.